this thing. I'm Clemens, the captain of Infinity. We are, we're here in the Marshall Islands. It's a rather odd place to get ready for a trip to the Arctic. It's in the middle of the Pacific, about as much in the middle as one can get. Infinity is a big red tub of concrete sort of like a bunker that, due to the miracle of water displacement, somehow floats. And it's all kept together by a crazy man who has been living here for the better part of 20 odd years, I would say, with his kids, Rhiannon and Chloe, and uh, girlfriend Sage, traveling uh, all over the mostly Pacific, exploring places that few people ever really get to see. Perfect example for Clem. Like, if we're talking about Clem as a character, so just the other day, um, we wanted to go for a dive, and he said to me, he goes, Tim, we're going to go for a deep dive. Like, this is a, an extreme deep water. We're going to go down to 60 meters, and we're going to look for hammerhead sharks. I was like, cool, no worries. So we battled out there in the dinghy. We jump in the water with all of our gear, and then Clem starts swearing and carrying on. He's like, Tim, I forgot my bloody weight belt. We've come so far to get to this dive. So what does he do? He takes the anchor out of the dinghy, takes a shackle off, it deflates his BCD, and then instantly descends down to 45 meters, holding onto the anchor. Straps the anchor into his BCD, and then continues on a full half an hour dive at like 50 meters. What kind of a human does that? <laughs> But I love him for it, that's the thing. Like, that's why I respect him. He's the kind of guy that, like, he does the craziest shit. And you sit there and go, how the hell can he, like, get through in these situations? And that's kind of why I'm putting my faith in this project so much, is because, really, it's because of him. The Marshall Islands are very, very remote. We are as far as you can pretty much sail on the biggest ocean of the planet, the Pacific. I've always been really keen to sail very far away to, you know, try and escape Babylon and all those uh, madnesses of modern civilization and uh, what do I run into? A nuclear dump site in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean called the Runnet Dome. Yeah. <laughs> As you can imagine, feeling is running pretty high about now, and there's reason for it. If everything goes according to plan, we'll soon see the largest explosion ever set off on the face of the Earth. The test islands for Mike are located at the top, or the northern sector, of Eniwetok Atoll, some 25 miles from Perry and Eniwetok, the two base islands of this atoll proving grounds. The problem this time is especially acute because this entire area of the Pacific is subject to radiological fallout. And this area is inhabited by some 20,000 people, plus, of course, the ships of this task force. We have entered a new epoch, the epoch of the Anthropocene, where man is changing the very geology of the planet. The astral of Inuitak here in the Marshall Islands 
uh, is considered the birthplace of the Anthropocene as it is the first place mankind has uh, detonated a thermal nuclear weapon, a hydrogen bomb. You have a grandstand seat here to one of the most momentous events in the history of science. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. It is now 30 seconds to zero time. Minus 10 seconds, Niner, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fourteen years of Hiroshima bomb every day. That kind of amount of explosions, all in one little atoll. And then some unfortunate American soldiers uh, scooped that all up into a big, uh, into a crater hole and covered it with a foot of concrete. And it's like a massive dome that's 13 inches thick made of cement and it's porous and supposedly when it's high tide there is like, it's like leaking radiation into the ocean. And I think we're going to try and go with the boat and then have some, whoever wants to go with the dinghy. Well, that's where we're going. <laughs> people have returned to live on Inuit Tuck at all. So it'll be interesting to meet those people, it'll be interesting to talk to those people. Um, I'm certain these people will be heavily, uh, you know, impacted by, by radiation. But I guess it's their home, you know. People do anything to stay home, because otherwise you're just a refugee. From 1948 to 1958, 43 nuclear tests were conducted on Eniwetok Atoll. Most of the tests were conducted in the northeast quadrant, leaving these islands the most heavily contaminated. The Eniwetok people became more insistent for return to their native land. The Eniwetok people are intelligent and resourceful, but untrained and unskilled in the industrial arts. They have the capacity as a people to assimilate the skills necessary to perform many of the cleanup tasks. The objective of keeping their exposure to radiation sources on the atoll to the absolute minimum is an important consideration, particularly since the Eniwetok people must live and earn their livelihood from the atoll for the remainder of their lives.
Oh, hello, I'm yeah. Tim. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hello, hello. my hello. name is Clemens. Oh, nice to David, meet you. I came there. David. Nice to see you and, uh, and welcome Clemens. to Clemens, nice to meet you. O B E D. Obed. So David Obed. 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 Yeah. Okay. And you're the acting mayor on the island. Yes. This is Enewetak in the Marshall Islands in the Central Pacific. Right where my finger is. That's where we are. Far away from America. Right here. Do you go to ruin it very often or no? No. no. I'm scared. You're scared? I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't want to go there. Is it very, is it very radioactive there? Uh, the radiation is rather low using the Geiger meter. Uh, but then it cannot in any way measure uh, plutonium. It can only measure uh, radioactive potassium and sesmium. Oh. But, but uh, plutonium it cannot. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't think of that. Ah. Oh. Wow, that has an old school plug. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, I'm gonna do it first try. Wow. Um, oh, that is cool. Isn't that neat? This is a 7107 GCA-08 model. The 09 model was an extra hundred dollars, so we uh, decided to go with the 08. Uh, it takes a while. It's like going through the scan, which I don't fully understand. But after some time, it gives you some val valuable inputs. Oh. Uh, it just takes some time to like. Oh, let's leave it on for a little bit. And let, yeah, yeah. It, let it cycle. Yeah. Are there little particles of plutonium all over the place there? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think so. That's why uh, that place actually, uh, we were advised by the Department of Energy of the United States not to go there. Not to go there. So, ah. so uh, uh, as we don't want harm to come your way also. Oh, yeah, thank you. You go there at your own risk. Yeah. But we want you to know it's risky. Okay. It's risky. Not a very good idea. No, not a very good oh, idea. Oh, okay. Thank you for warning us. Yeah. We didn't think about the Geiger counter not reading plutonium. No. Each of the four kinds of missiles discharged by radioactive substances has its own ballistic behavior. Alpha particles cannot penetrate the skin. Theta particles can cause surface burns if the assault is sufficiently concentrated and sustained. Both are able to gain entry through the eating and breathing of radioactive matter or via breaks in the skin. Once inside, this so-called hot stuff takes up residence in various parts of the body giving off highly ionizing alpha and beta particles. There's no effective method for dislodging the stuff. No known way of neutralizing or destroying it. There is no method of hastening its half-life, which is the time required for 50% of the substance to decay. With some substances, it is a matter of less than a second. But if you had some plutonium inside you, you wouldn't make any plans to celebrate the event. Plutonium's half-life is 24,000 years. The plutonium is in Ronald Island. Plutonium is the worst yeah. radio radiation. So, once again, we don't understand about the radiation. Right. We just wait, wait, and see what happens. What will be going to happen for us. How has it been so far? Like, uh, has there been a l some effects from the uh, the radiation yeah, that you look have like seen? somebody, somebody will die already, cancer. Yeah. Cancer from the uh, brain, right. some from the lunch, okay. from heart, yeah. and some they call, uh, what they call the other one, uh, Maybe bone? They're like a uh, sick is yellow, like a... Uh, uh, we don't know what's going on in this island today. Yeah, yeah. At least twice in a year or three times in a year, uh, technicians from uh, California would come to collect some samples, stool and urine. Also, they would collect some uh, fish and uh, local foods. Uh, they would bring it back to uh, California for testing. Uh, people here in an attack, we really don't know. They really don't know what is the result of those uh, tests for the foods. Uh. 
What kind of fish do you catch around here? Uh, we call uh, rich never. Uh -huh. We call biggie. We well call biggie. Mambasi. And you know, no, you know it. All the fish, plenty of type of fish we eat here. Is it safe to eat the fish, do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We just eat. Do you grow any of the vegetables here? Uh, yeah, we don't grow them, boss. No more. No more. Yeah. Is it safe to eat any of the vegetables or no? Three islands. Three islands, there was three straight water bound. It's looking like blue ocean. But three islands, one the three straw, eh? like a blue ocean. Yeah. India we call crater. Was three islands right there and when they blew up, no more island. How big were the islands that blew oh, up? The same size like this? Same size like the island. Big island. What this tremendous blast did to the atoll, nobody knows. The results of this tremendous power can be shown at the atoll. Here is an aerial photo of the test area of the atoll before the blast. And here is the same area after the blast showing the crater caused by Mike. The outlined island in the center is former Ilugilab, the Zero Island. The crater is roughly a mile in diameter. And the Runit is not clean up yet. Runit Island, once covered with coconut trees, is now not only littered with large amounts of debris, but is also the island having the highest residual radioactivity. It is the only island which the people will be prohibited from visiting. The two craters will be used for entombment of radioactive debris collected throughout the atoll. Entombment is a considerably cheaper means of disposal of contaminated material than ocean dumping of encapsulated modules or shipment back to the United States. Entombment is expected to be more acceptable to the Environmental Protection Agency. So you're left in a pretty tough situation. Yeah, you're right. The land's contaminated, the fish might be contaminated, the coconuts are contaminated, and tourists can't come here. Strong, American, really strong country, water, really strong. We cannot play with them. Do you have uh, any words for the United States government? Do you feel like they should do something about this? Uh, I, don't, I have no idea. No idea. Concerned efforts of numerous agencies of the United States government can fulfill their hope of returning to their homeland after more than three decades. Radiation in general is very difficult for me to grasp, very difficult to understand. You know, I understand poison somehow, somehow poison kills things. And this is not exactly like poison, but somehow it is, acts very similar, you know, but it's poison that you don't have to touch to maybe get poisoned. And maybe the way you get poisoned, you might not feel anything. It's not like you get sick and puke, or you may, but um, you know, may not, not know what happened to you. And then all of a sudden, some years later, you may get really sick, or maybe next week, or maybe your children, you don't know. Uh, so just over the horizon here behind me uh, lies Inuwetak Atoll uh, and Runit Dome. And I tell you what, I'm starting to get pretty nervous about the idea. Uh, my father passed away from cancer a few years ago um, from mesothelioma as a result of exposure to asbestos. And I saw how cancer just struck him down and how it affected him for so many years and how it affected our entire family. So. Uh, I've been having a few strange feelings about exposing myself to such huge levels of radiation. We've got a Geiger counter, but we don't know how to work it. We've got a few uh, slightly protective suits, I think they're meant for painting or something. And we've got a few dust masks as protection. And that's about it. So, I'm just looking at, you know, Sage and the kids on this boat and thinking, they're completely clueless about where we're going. Should they be here? I don't think so. We've all kind of made a decision to be here, but the kids haven't. They've got no idea what's going on. They're just following their parents around. I know Sage doesn't want to be here. 
Um, is this Clem acting selfishly? I don't think so. He's not a very selfish person. He just cares so much about the environment and so much about the planet that he's willing to risk it all. It's just a place where the the planet is suffering and sick and there's radiation and who knows like what the effects will be on on us like being there. And I especially don't want, you know, to go there with the kids. I tried to plant a seed, like, for other people to not want to go, and, uh, and it was definitely overruled, so we're going there. Mom, move is finished. Yeah, where's Papa? He's inside. Okay. I'll be there soon, Chloe. Go, go see Papa for a bit, and, and don't worry. Potentially endangering more than any of the rest of us. You're bringing your family there. Talk yeah. about that. Sure. Yeah, I'm, 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 I am bringing my family there. I'm not bringing my family onto the dome. I'll walk that path by myself. So we are hoping that by, you know, keeping most everyone on this ship on top of the ship, by not dropping the anchor into the mud, by not touching even, you know, anything from the island, definitely not bringing anything on board from the island, but, you know, we're just hoping that, that we somehow come out of it clean. You know, uh, Sage didn't want to go. <laughs> the children, they don't know what's going on. Um, we won't be staying long, and uh, hopefully we'll have some sort of an impact that justifies what we're doing, what I'm deciding to do, but I'm certainly not sure of it. I have lots of doubts, lots of worries, lots of fears. But here we are, we'll just do it. This is a silly thing to do. You know it already. But we're doing it. <clears throat> yeah. That one did, isn't it? This is different. It's different. This is not the right suit. So these birds are literally nesting right directly on the nuclear waste underneath. Atop a giant pile of nuclear waste, we have some really interesting hydrogen bomb commemorative coins. We got the cleanup coin, where they just sort of, you know, heaped it on here. We got the, uh, celebration of the hydrogen bomb test coin ruin it they got the name of all the big tests too and all the islands that they leveled kind of strange thing to celebrate they're really on there though the anthropocene
don't know that much about the effects of uh, the radiation. And, and also, I can see the effects of some of the other kids, their skin. And I've seen a little girl's face that's got chunks of her skin are red and, and have bubbles on them. And uh, it's definitely not from staph or from other infections that I've seen around the South Pacific. My daughter, Rianne, has told me about like a, a little kid that couldn't use his, his arm at all. They don't look in good, healthy shape, you know? They don't look healthy or happy, and yeah, it's, it's really, really sad. A part of me can, can see the justification of wanting to expose what's going on to the, to the world, but I don't see why we have to actually physically go there. Now that it's all over, I have sort of an inadequate feeling. There's so much more that could have been said. You get a feeling, even now, that nothing is really over. That this is a breathing spell, like a lull in battle before the next attack. What is new today is old hat tomorrow. And of the day after tomorrow, who knows what these Pacific fans may see. Not a single sign here. Not a fence, nothing. Nothing at all. You would have no idea. Except for that ominous dome. That one minute somehow differs from the next. So it's very... Uh, Confusing. I don't know if it's working. It also shows the low battery sign right now. You might not get all the clicks. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not a scientist. I don't know how a Geiger counter works. It was part of my training. Big mistake. Maybe we should all learn how this works. Quite honestly, I'm, I'm scared to death. But I feel it's important that people know about what's going on on this planet right now. Um, we are driving ourselves and the rest of life on this planet to the doom. And we have barely any time left to turn it around. For me, uh, I, I keep drawing a parallel that is kind of uncomfortable to hear, but um, in, in the, during the Second World War, I'm German, yeah, during the Second World War, uh, American families sent their children, their their young boys, you know, to 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 Germany, try and save the world from something evil, from something that was really scary, from you know something that just wasn't okay. And uh, and, and right now we're at the same kind of moment in history. So our actions now have to be as radical as the actions back in those days when when people just sacrificed, you know, th their lives for their country to, to save the day. Right now, we're at the same place in history. We need to sacrifice everything we have for the sake of the future. And, and nobody wants to look that way. Nobody wants to open their eyes and say, you know what, whatever it takes 
let's try and save the day. Let's turn it around. We still have a chance. It, it's not for long that we'll be able to say that. This is a time bomb waiting to blow up. Climate change is taking its toll on the rocks right here in front of me. All this is going to wash away within a couple of decades and we'll have a next nuclear catastrophe in the middle of the Pacific. So please take some responsibility. USA government, pick up your shit. Thank you very much.